Claude Nilgard, Hauptde de Moritz, Medzine Rapporten. Welcome to another video about the armors. Recently we covered the helmets, the most important piece of gear. You know, the head is probably the most important part of your body to protect. So now let's work our way down and see what else we got. Of course you have the neck area, which is really important to protect. But just for now, let's leave it and continue a bit and we will get to the shoulders. So that means the pauldrons. Especially in a high fantasy setting, this piece of armor is usually oversized. Well, it maybe gives you a cool look, you know, wide shoulders. But in a real situation, it would be really impractical. Not only because of the size, but also the stupendous weight. Because the size is usually accompanied by crazy thickness of the material. I think if we create just one pauldron like this, it would actually weigh more than properly made full set of armor. Also, the construction. It's often just one large piece. They are wrongly mounted, they just don't respect the anatomy. Of course, in fantasy settings, even the humans can have different anatomy than us or they can have some lighter metal. So it could kind of work, but still, history is the best inspiration. And of course, here we are talking about the fantasy settings which have historical inspiration, so they are realistic. So we talking about the humans that still look more or less like nowadays humans. They are bone and flesh and usually they have a technology which is a kind of a medieval level of technology. So we can use me as an example. So let's armor up and continue with the presentation. Of course, our recorder will catch some sounds of the armor, but we want to show it properly. So the armor is on. You may ask why I wear only one shoulder. It's because that on the other one, I want to present you different kinds of shoulder protection, which Nazari Brigade use. Of course, recently there was a Netflix Witcher series and they have different presentation of Nilfgaardian kind of armors. So we will definitely mention it again. We already made a complex react video on Netflix Witcher armors, the Nilfgaardian ones. But uh, we call there the first season pauldron bulky and non-functional. It's because it's just one large piece and it doesn't allow you a movement. There were some kind of a similar historical pauldrons, similar shapes, but they were constructed from several pieces which precisely fitted together. So it will allow you the movement. We are more happy about pauldron construction in the second season. Well, not thrilled. We don't personally like the exact design and stylization. It looks more like a fairy tale or high fantasy. It misses that raw sense of practicality and mass production. But at least it looks, it will give you reasonable movement. Right here we have the display of plate shoulder protection, which we use in a Nazari Brigade project. The large pauldrons, small ones, a simple target. Let's start with that one. The target. The simplest way how to protect your joints with plate. It's just a simple circle with two holes and you put string through them so then you can connect it to your paddy jacket. You can use it on a shoulder, elbow, knee, maybe as a protection for armpit or even for the back of your neck. It can have different sizes, different depths. It can be hexagon, octagon. It will work exactly the same. It is really easy and cheap to make. So great for mass production. This one is not Nilfgaardian stylized, but you can just blacken it, maybe add some brass on the edges. so add more fanciness. It is ultra light. It doesn't have any moving parts, so it won't rattle. But of course, it 
doesn't project a large area. But that's it. The simplest way to target. Next, the small ones. Those we can already call the pauldrons. They are made of three parts and in the inner side they are connected with leather straps which allows the movement. So they practically like fall in. So this allows great movement. To your armor garment they are connected by strings right here and then you will use the leather strap around your arm and then you have a nice shoulder protection. In the Witcher games those appeared in a trailer killing monsters and also in a game as a medium infantry gear. They are composed of three basic rectangular shapes and they are just bended to fit around the arm. So it's really easy to manufacture and mass produce in Nilfgaardian factories. It's not an artistic creation, but it does the job. And practically every soldier could be equipped with that. It's a pretty similar philosophy when the Romans created Lorica Segmentata. They could make it fancier, but this was easy to produce, easy to transport, so all of the soldiers could have it. And it was good enough, so the sheer numbers, that was the game changer. Let's now move to the large pauldrons for heavy infantry. It doesn't mean they are heavy themselves, they still have reasonable weight and of course mobility. They are again connected with leather straps so they still keep really good movement. You will just add two more larger pieces and this ridge and you have heavy infantry proper pauldrons. Of course the brass decoration adds a little bit of weight but it's still reasonable. It protects practically all of the shoulder joint and the upper arm. So for this piece of armor, the ratio between weight, mobility and protection, it's absolutely brilliant. Right here we must point out a pretty major change that we applied to original Wisher Games design. In the games, the pauldrons are mounted pretty low on the arm, about there. And the ridge is on the edge of the pauldron and it's angled inwards. Few problems. If you raise your arm and put it down, there is a huge chance that the pauldron will get stuck in your cuirass. And of course that creates the problem. So it has to be mounted closer to the neck, just like this one. But then you can't have the ridge on the edge and angled inside. So we took inspiration in a real historical Italian armor when the ridges are angled out, just like this. And we move it a bit just to the spot when it doesn't interfere with your neck any longer. And then this creates functional piece of armor. As you can see in this cinematic trailer, the ridge of the pauldron is clipping right through the head of the commander. That's what I mean. It can work as a 3D model, but it wouldn't be functional in reality. in our recent video about the helmets, we actually missed out the opportunity to put the helmet on. But we hope that right now it will be a little bit more interesting because we will show you how the helmet actually cooperate with the pauldrons and create the production.
if you receive any strike from above, the helmet is angled so it will slide off. And then it's a pauldron time. So it will glance off the helmet or maybe you will get it directly on the shoulder. But still it will glance off and nicely slide to the side. So you won't get the full force of the impact. Just some of it. If you get a strike from the side, then when the ridges come into play and it will protect the side of your neck. So the helmet and the pauldrons always works together. Of course, you can probably see the large opening here, the neck and the face. So how to protect it? Well, one way is the male collar to go around or you can use the bever and you will close this opening and you will learn more about this in the next video. Hope you find this video informative, give us a like. When we fully cover all of the pieces of Nazari soldier armor you can look forward to the video when we will show how it is put on and fully tested. By then, Lord of God.